Hey guys, it's Carla. Today I'm starting a floral series um, that hopefully we can all learn from and kind of advance our skills a little bit. So you've all seen these paintings where everything is bold and hard. We don't want that. We want these soft edges. So let's get started. The first thing I've, I've done is painted my my base coat on my, I use chipboard. Uh, you can use canvas or wood or whatever. But I'm using chipboard, it's really inexpensive. And when you're just practicing, it's, it's the perfect thing to use because it's smooth and it's inexpensive. So what I've done here is I watered down kind of a light yellow shade and um, this is, I'm just using plain water. Um, and I very messily brushed that on. And now I'm doing the same thing with kind of a muted pinkish shade. So just really whatever shades you want behind your flowers. Um, it's very abstract, it's very uh, messy and loose. So I'm just doing this with a flat, kind of a large flat brush. And that that I'm dipping in right there is um, extender. And I'll put a link to that in the description in case you wanna get some of that or you may already have some of your own. Or you could use glazing liquid. So I've thinned it down with extender, the shade that I want my, the main shade that I want in my flowers. And so I'm just brushing on just a basic rose shape. And I wanna kinda of keep in mind like which way the roses are gonna be facing and all that. And I wanna keep composition in mind because I don't want them all lined up and uh, boring. So, uh, so now with that, with that uh, kind of thin down shade on there, now I want to go in without thinning it down and use a dark shade to put the center of my rose in. And I'm not doing like a circle. I'm doing basically a half circle. And it's going to look funny for a while, but that's how, that's how I start them. And that will make more sense later. But this shows you which way the roses are going to be facing. So now I'm just wiping my brush off. I don't always clean my brush. I just sometimes just wipe it. So now I'm gonna start on some subtle highlights to kind of start forming my petals. So there's one petal and I'm uh, kind of blurring it out with my finger and you got to do that as soon as you put it on while it's still wet. But that gives you that, um, that nice movement in the paint, which ends up looking really good uh, when you have several colors on there. So I'm just kind of forming some petals here. And now I want to put in my bowl shape. So it, roses have like a bowl shape at the bottom. So you can see right here, um, I've blurred it out. And when I blur it with my finger like that, I'm blurring it in the direction that the petals are going. So the top petals, I'm blurring it upward that way. And then the bottom petals down. So keep that in mind. And then I just want to continue with putting in some, some softer color. I'm kind of blending down into that dark center. And it's still wet, so it's gonna uh, blend well and pick up some of that color. Uh, and I'm just using a flat brush for this whole painting I'm using the same brush for everything, uh, except the background, of course, it was a larger flat brush 
but this is just um just a half inch flat brush so i'm going to do the same thing to to these other two roses and you can already see how it's starting to um, become a rose uh, but obviously the, we're going to do a lot more to it but you can already start seeing that and so the more highlights and stuff that you put on the more obvious that is um, and then what we're going to work on today a lot of what we're going to work on is soft edges and lost edges even uh, and I'll explain that later but like like that picture that I showed you of the mistakes that some people make um, things don't have to be so bold and you know it it looks good to have things subtle and soft especially you know with flowers because flowers are kind of they should give you like a kind of a soft feeling anyway so they don't need to be bold and bright and kind of obnoxious which is what I feel like uh, that picture that I showed you it's like it just kind of jumps out at you and I don't like that look um, and I'm not saying that all paintings look bad to not have soft edges but it is another style that I just I really like I, I like this this soft look and um, these edges are not soft yet but I'll show you later how to soften them so I want to make sure that my center is dark enough And these colors that are on my palette, um, if you have these colors, you pretty much can make almost any color. You know, you can't make the fluorescent colors and all that, but um, you know, you've got your primary colors, your red, yellow, blue, and then you've got some other shades in there. So with red, yellow, and blue, you can, that's what all colors are formed by so it's um it's really all you need is these colors i've got right here so now i'm forming some more petals i've gone with the lighter shade and notice almost every time that i make a stroke i use my finger and kind of blur out one side of it so then you you can leave that sharp edge on on one side and have it kind of blurred out on the other so it's, um, it's a really cool technique for roses, for any flowers, really. So I'm just jumping back and forth from flower to flower, um, just forming petals and blurring out where I want soft edges inside the flower. Um, we'll work on the soft outer edges later. I don't want to cover up all my dark. I want to make sure that um, that the light shades don't take over, because if you don't have those dark edges, those dark petals, then um, your light petals are not going to mean anything. And when you don't have much paint on your brush, that's when you can go in with these more subtle highlights, um, the petals that you don't want to be real obvious.
And you can go back into this as many times as you want because um, paint can just pile up on top of paint and you could go over it 50 times and it wouldn't matter. Um, in fact, the more texture, the better. So even at this point, I could completely change the color of my roses if I wanted to. I'm not going to, but um, but you can. It's because paint covers paint. So I'm trying to leave the backs of these roses more in shadow. So there's going to be some subtle highlights back there, but the brighter areas are going to be in the front of each one. Okay, so I've thinned down that pink color again, and I'm just putting some more color into the background. Once it dries, you can kind of see what you've got, and I just wanted it a little bit more colorful back there. And it's easier to do this before you put your greenery on. So again, I'm, I'm using extender to, to thin it out. You could use water, but the thing with water, with acrylic paint is uh, it's a great way to thin thin your paint, but it's also a solvent for acrylic paint, which means that it kind of um, dissolves the paint, I guess. So if you're concerned about the paint that you're painting over, like the paint that's underneath, if you want to keep it intact, then um, it's best not to use water necessarily because it could loosen it up and um, kind of ruin what you've got on there. All right, so now I'm going to start on my greenery. And I'm not finished with the flowers yet, but I'm going to go ahead and get some of my leaves and stems in. So I've mixed up a muted green shade and then I've, uh, half of it I've darkened with black um, so that I don't have all one shade of green. It's good when you're putting the flowers and, I mean, the leaves and stems in. It's good to, um, especially with the leaves, to change the, the shade often. So you want some dark, you want some lighter, you want some like a different shade completely, like more yellow. So um, it's, it's easy to start putting this on there and forget to change the shade, but try to remember to do that. So I, the, the leaves I'm doing the same way. I'm kind of blurring them out in places when I, when I put them on there. And that just helps with that soft look. If you do forget to, to change the shade of your green as you go, you can always come back on top of it and, and put a different shade on top. So um, it's just, I guess it's just easier if you go ahead and do that now, but but don't freak out if you didn't because it's easy to fix. And make sure that your leaves are different sizes. You want some that are uh, pretty big and then some that are small and then some that it's just, it's just green, but it's not necessarily a leaf shape. And you'll see me do that after a while. It's um, just kind of scumbling in some, some green color.
but just relax with this. Don't, um, don't get uptight about it and don't stress over it because it's, it's a very free style of, of painting florals. And, um, if you do get uptight with it, then it, it shows in the end. So just be very loose with it and just let your brush jump around. Um, there's places, you know, where you have to slow down, but, and also you can use this greenery to kind of shape some of your petals or to reshape some of your petals if you want. Okay, now I'm using a wet brush, wet with water, not, not extender, uh, because remember the water is a solvent. Um, but if you'll notice with just a wet brush, you can come back and rub over those edges and it softens them. It kind of blurs them out into the background. And so you can create soft edges this way or you can create lost edges. Um, I don't know if you know anything about lost edges, but it's where you just, you can't even find the, the edge of the flower, uh, which looks good in a lot of styles of painting, and this is one of them. Uh, so just, with just a wet brush, a clean wet brush, just kind of scumble over the edges that you want softened or uh, lost. And if you'll notice up there, on that top flower where it meets the that dark green leaf um, see how hard that is there's a hard line there i'll show you in a minute how uh the difference when i come back and and soften that edge up so now i've come back with just white but when you're doing when you're using just plain white you wanna be very sparing with it. You want to just touch here and there, but not a lot of places because you don't want that really, really bold um, highlight like you saw earlier in, in that picture. So just here and there, just to kind of add some spark to it. You can put in just plain white. Okay, so now right there, that's where I'm blurring that edge out and if you remember how hard and sharp it was and now look at it now it's very soft so and that's just plain water that does that and it doesn't matter that the paint was dry and it was the the green and the pink were both dry but with acrylic paint you can sometimes you can even come back the next day and and do this um soften the edges up with water so just keep that in mind that's a nice little tool to have so i'm just scumbling around here with the watered down green and then now i'm using my wet brush again to soften some of the stem edges so you can do it with the leaves the petals the the stems the um any part that you want softened you can just come back and kind of buff it out with water um, please let me know in the comments if if you like this style of painting and if you kind of want to see more of it maybe different um, kinds of flowers uh, other than roses so I know that one that I'm gonna do pretty soon is um, irises because a lot of people have trouble painting irises because there's so much to them there's so much uh, waviness and this they're kind of intimidating to paint so that's gonna be one of them coming up that I'm gonna work on but but please do let me know in the comments if if you like this style and if you want to see more of it so now i'm just coming back to the background and using um 
extender to thin down some of this paint again to, to kind of brighten things up in the background. That yellow almost makes it look like there's light coming from back there and I think that looks really pretty. But again, I'm just using this same flat brush, this half inch flat brush for the whole thing. That's the only brush I've used. So that's it guys, and I hope y'all enjoyed this. And again, please leave a comment and let me know what you think. And thank you so much. Have a great day and God bless you.